Wait. Hello, YouTube. It's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome back to Movies uh, Director's Appreciation Month. And uh, this time I'm going to give a tribute to one of the passing directors that uh, he just passed away today. So I want to give him a, a, a nice tribute and I want to uh, review this movie because I haven't reviewed it yet. And it's Mr. Joel Schumacher. Don't worry, I'm not reviewing Batman and Robin. This is a better film that came out after Batman and Robin. Starring the great Nicolas Cage. This is before he was, you know, in debt and doing movies like 18 movies a year because he has to pay old debts. That's eight millimeters. Yeah. A 1998 American uh, crime thriller. But this movie, I must warn you, if you do see this film, it is very disturbing. There's a lot of things messed up in it. But I would see it for Schumacher's directing because it's fantastic. Yeah, so 80 years old, he, he passed away. Rest in peace, Joel Schumacher. We, we're going to miss you. You gave us some stuff, yes. I will always love Batman Batman Forever. It was one of my favorite Batman movies as a kid uh, after, you know, the, the Keaton era. And uh, it's an underrated sequel. I don't hate it. I never hated it. Batman and Robin, I blame more of the writing. Yes, your directing wasn't good, but you can only do so much. Uh, I like The Lost Boys. I think you were a great, you did a good horror movie. It's be definitely better than the sequel, The Tribe. And uh, this movie I really like. So... Thanks for everything you gave us, Joe Schumacher. Even your uh, writing when you wrote The Wiz in the 70s. I'm going to miss you, man. This movie came out in February of, no, of 1999. Yes, two years after. People were afraid this was going to be silly, like Batman and Robin. Oh, God, no, it's not. There's not any humor in this movie. It's so, It's very dark. Let's read the back, shall we? It's short. I'll keep it short. Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage stars with Joaquin Phoenix, a new recent Oscar winner for the Joker movie, and Catherine Keener, another really good actress with a big nose, in an electrifying thriller from the writer of Seven, directed by Joel Schumacher. Again, rest in peace, sir. I give I, I give you your, your props. He did the, the Client, Batman Forever, and Time to Kill. I'm going to go back and rewatch his movies that he directed because I miss him already. Um, this dramatic story follows one man's obsessive search for the truth about a six-year-old crime and his ultimate discovery of the truth about himself. Yeah, it's basically a man that's finding uh, the truth about this horrible uh, snuff film that was, uh, was uh, you know, purchased and leaked on, on T VHS because there was no DVDs. This was, a late, this was uh, the late 90s, so there wasn't any digital stuff at the time yet. And, uh, yeah, that it pursues. Uh, this movie, the budget was $40 million. And it only made uh, it made ninety six million, so not a complete flop, but it didn't make the money that it could have. And uh, people were just afraid that yeah, Metacritic gave it overwhelmingly dislikes because it's about a snuff film, basically torture porn. Yeah, that's not for everybody. And after seeing Batman and Robin torturing people's childhood, you know, they didn't want to see this. Here's the synopsis. I know I don't care about what Rotten Tomatoes things, but I'm going to read it anyway. It's sadistic violence is unappealing and is lacking a suspensive mystery. Uh, the audiences gave it a C-. Dark Alley of Variety criticized the film, stating that 8mm is a movie that keeps jumping the gate and finally unraveling all over the floor. Roger Ebert was one of the film's admirers, saying that, I know some audience members will be appalled by this film, but as, we, as many were with Seven... It is a hard R, yes, yeah, so don't let your children watch this movie. That would doubtless have been 19, uh, NC-17 if it had come out from an indie instead of a big studio with clout. Yeah, um, uh, Columbia P Pictures did this film. So I think they're owned by Disney now. Well, I, don't, I don't know. But they did the Spider-Man movies in the 2000s. This ain't no Spider-Man movie. This is dark. This is like if you took the Punisher and put it in, you know, put some, uh, you know, sexual assault in it. Um, not a slick exploitation exercise with all the trappings of depravity, but none of the consequences. Not a film where moral issues are forgotten in the climate of an action climax, yet the hero and an ordinary man who finds himself able to handle violent situation, but that's not the movie's point. It's exactly. It's a, it's a movie teaching you a lesson on how horrible it is to exploit po uh, torture porn. The last two words of the screenplay are save me. By the time they said, we know what they mean. Yeah, exactly. It's not preaching. It's not the Black Lives Matter movement or Me Too or anything like that. It's about, yeah, like I said, 
a man trying to find a crime and just ending it. Because here's a, so, some more information in case you want to. Private investigator Tom Wallace, that's, uh, you know, um, Nicholas Cage, is contacted by Daniel Lo Longdale, attorney for wealthy widow Mrs. Christian, whose husband has been recently murdered, who he, she recently died. While clearing out her husband's safe, she and Longdale find an 8mm movie, which appears to depict a real murder of a girl. Of course, you don't see too much, but what you do see is very disturbing. So, I, again, go into this movie, know what you're getting into. Think the, the Netflix uh, TV miniseries uh, with uh, with Caitlin Deaver, uh, unbelievable. Think that, but with, you know, with more blood and even more intense, and that she doesn't survive at the end. No, Cage doesn't die here, but, you know... It, it's basically that. In Hollywood, with the help of an adult video employee called Max California, Wells develops into the world of underground and sometimes illegal fetish pornography. Again, something I'm not into, guys. I'm a very clean-cut, uh, you know, um, decent person. I would never exploit somebody's bare skin on the Internet. I would, I would never do that today because I'm not like that. Yeah, and there, there's a... Uh, there's a lot of there's not a lot of action in the movie, but there's a lot of intense moments. One criticism I have of the movie: the movie's too long. The movie's way too long. It's two hours and three minutes. You could have cut thirty minutes from this movie. We get it. It's messed up. But and while the performances are good, Joaquin Phoenix is great. This is an early role when he was young. You have Nicolas Cage. You have James Gandolfini. May he rest in peace as well. You have Peter Stormare as Dino Velvet. You have Anthony Hill. Hell, does Daniel Longdale you have Myra Carter as Mrs. Christian, Catherine Keener as Amy Wells. You have a young Norman Reedus from The Walking Dead in this movie before he did The Walking Dead. You have Amy Morton, uh, Torrenson Vogus, Louis Segur as Manny, and Chris Bauer as George Anthony Higgins and Jenny Powell as Mary Ann Matthews. So there's a decent cast. It's not 85 characters, but you could have snipped, you could have edited some scenes out. You only need to show the snuff film once. You don't need to show it again and again and all this crazy sex shop shit. It's not for me, guys. Be uh, torture and BDSM and and and, uh, and all this Fifty Shades stuff, it's not for me. It's not. What I watch and what I do are two different things. Just saying, you know. Everybody has their urges, but this isn't for me. I don't like to see someone tied up or chained up or ball and gagged. It's just not for me. It's not sexy. It's just really creepy. And really messed up. But the movie itself, it, it makes its impact. It doesn't have to do... Unlike Fifty Shades, it goes further than that. It actually shows the the, the consequences of evil. Of what people will put on, the, on camera nowadays. Especially nowadays where people can do this on their phone in the woods. Just saying. But people are more cynical and, and, and douchebaggery now. But uh, this movie, Schumacher got his point across. The writer, Andrew Kevin Walker, I give him... I do give him credit because the movie, he made it uncomfortable. So this is not a movie for everyone. If you see this, see it for Schumacher's directing because he deserves the attention. He passed away, and I'm doing this for him. He, uh, the, the writer also did, um, he wrote Brain Scan in the 90s. He wrote Hideaway, Seven. He, was a, 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 he did a cameo appearance in Event Horizon. He wrote this. He wrote the 1999 Sleepy Hollow movie. He also wrote uh, The Follow, Ambush, The Wolfman remake, but that was that was a crime in itself, and Nerdland. So he's done some stuff. But yeah, this movie is very uncomfortable, it's very dark, it's R rated, good performances, but if you're not gonna if you can't stomach a, a really hard R rated crime thriller, then don't watch it. But if I would watch it, I would warn you, do not let your kids watch this. If you thought Fifty Shades was going to scar them, this will scar them a lot worse. So keep kids far away unless they're 18 and they have the strong fortitude and stomach to handle it like I did. I'm like, wow, if this movie would never be made today, oh, God, no. Anything on film that's that's either child pornography or or any, uh, you know, like fetish films or anything like that would be banned in certain theaters, especially when theaters reopen in a few weeks. But like I said, it's a good inch. The story is very engaging. And it's not a, oh, it's a fun movie. No, trust me, Josh, this is not a fun movie. This is a very dark film. This is a, this movie is darker than any crime drama that came out last year. Yes, that includes that, that disastrous 365 movie that's on uh, Netflix right now. That movie 
couldn't hold a candle. That's that's a, a messed up, you know, make believe. This is something that actually happened. Well, based on a true story, anyway. Um, you know, and it's it's torture porn, which they actually filmed and put in your face. So it's a lot darker than that movie. But that movie, I wouldn't bother with. Just see this. If you have the stomach, watch it. Cage's performance and Joaquin Phoenix's performance is great. And uh, like the, like I said, it, it makes you uncomfortable, which is what the movie's plot is, is, you know, supposed to do. But anyway, rest in peace, Joel Schumacher. This is a tribute to you, sir. You did a good job with this. This was after Batman and Robin. People thought you couldn't direct again, but you proved them wrong. It's just, it's a, it's a subject matter that's not for everyone. After scene, let's kick some ice. You don't want to see, oh, bam, uh, torture. I'm like, yeah, people weren't ready for that. But it's still a good movie. It's still a well-made movie. But it isn't fun, like, it's not a fun action movie like Taken or something like that. It's definitely something different. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. RIP to Mr. Schumacher. Thanks for giving us uh, so, so many enjoyable films and not so enjoyable films. You tried, sir. You Your job was to entertain and you did that. Better than some directors have done in the last 10 years. So, see you on the other side. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.